work. Who's hiding there? Somebody's hiding behind me. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. <laughs> Why did you say? Hi, I got somebody hiding there. Come up here, Chevelle. It's seven o'clock. It's Monday morning, and it is January eight. January eight. Okay, and um, happy anniversary to Ernie. Uh, Thirty-five years of uh, married life. Ernie's a friend from the Philippines. Okay, so today, today, Chevelle, Chevelle, go to your seat already. <laughs> Hey, Shabby, go to your seat. Chavelle just celebrated her seventh, her sixth and uh, they also birthday. Yes, yeah. sir. Okay. Okay, go to your seat now. So let's begin. So today, today, we will do something different. Okay? So we have been doing uh, gospel commentaries every day or almost every day. So I think today we will start, since it's the new year also, the beginning of a new year, we will try to intersperse our gospel commentaries with a review of some of some pious practices that are traditionally practiced uh, by Catholics. Okay? So uh, this is a, this is what Catholic best practices would really be all about. Besides understanding the messages of the gospel, uh, we will also try to uh, review. What are, the, what are those kinds of practices that um, Catholics have traditionally practiced all throughout uh, the generations of Catholics from the time that uh, uh, our, our, the time of our Lord? Okay? Uh, what, what have been the, uh, the different ways and different practices that Catholics have applied in order to live their Catholic lives, our Catholic lives, better each day? and uh, help us achieve um, uh, the objectives of uh, what our Catholic uh, life is all about. So, and we will do this, um, we'll do this by starting from the very first thing we do um, in, in starting our day, okay? So we're gonna go through uh, our day and see what are the things that we normally practice that will help us uh, become good Catholics. So let's see, let's see. What is the first thing we do? The first prayer that we do when you hear that knock on the door at six o'clock in the morning to wake everybody up and we jump out of bed. What is the first thing we do? The morning offering. Okay, the morning offering, right? The morning offering. So the morning offering is a prayer by its very name. There's so many ghosts walking around me. Okay, the morning offering, by its very name, is the first prayer that we do every day. Morning offering. Right? It's the first prayer we do every day. It's the prayer that we, that we do immediately upon gaining consciousness. Immediately upon uh, rousing ourselves from slumber. In order to start the day. Now there are different components of that. Right? There are different components of how the morning prayer. Uh, can be effectively said. And the way we do it at home is. That when the alarm clock rings. Or when the knock on the door. Is heard. What do you do? Jump out of bed. You jump out of bed. Right? jump out of bed you wake yourself up jump out of bed and with that enthusiasm of starting the day we go on our knees go on our knees make the first sign of the cross of that day in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit and then start reciting the formula of the morning offering prayer that you have in your rooms right that that i had framed right there for you to be to learn how to pray it right? when these kids were little i used to take them from their beds and uh, do the morning offering with them kneeling 
before that crucifix in their rooms or the pictures of Our Lady in the rooms and would pray the morning offering with them. And that's how they got to memorize praying the morning offering prayer. Uh, and uh, parenthetically, um, this is one tip I'd like to give parents. If you want to teach your kids to learn to pray, you have to do it with them. You have to demonstrate it with them, for them. And um, you have to be kneeling down beside them, making the sign of the cross with them, and repeating the prayers with them until they get it. Until they get it and until they could do it on their own. And that's the way that the habits are acquired. But parents have to be there to demonstrate for them, for their children. Otherwise, children are children. They will never do it on their own. At least in the beginning, they won't do it right away. But once they acquire the habit because mom or dad was there to do it with them, well, it will be easier in the long run. Nowadays, with my kids being 16, I mean, sorry, 15, 14 years old, <laughs> and down the line to Chevelle, who just celebrated her sixth birthday yesterday, um, I don't have to be doing that anymore. I knock on the door at 6 o'clock in the morning, and I just watch them jump out of their beds and down on their knees to begin the day to do the morning offering prayer, which is the first prayer of the day. Now, what, what is included in that morning offering prayer? Precisely, it's called mor uh, morning, because you do it in the morning, and it's an offering, right? It's an offering. What does that mean? Well, we offer the whole day to God. It's as simple as that, that our whole day is going to be dedicated to the service of God, to the glory of God. Okay? That everything we do during that day we would like to put at the service of our Lord Jesus Christ. So what a beautiful, beautiful way to start to start the day. When we could offer that whole day to Jesus, that whole day to Our Lady, and ask uh, all our friends from our guardian angel, right? to uh, all the angels in heaven, to Our Lady, to St. Joseph. We ask everybody's help to help us offer up that day and do a good job that day and give greater glory and honor to God that day. Right? Now, there are many formulas. There are many um, variations of this morning prayer that uh, you can find in, in many literature. Okay? Uh, here I just I just found uh, in this in this book the Roman Missal. Okay, there is that. Uh, oh, it's going to be inverted on there, but there's going to be there uh, a section here in the Roman Missal is about prayers, and you should see there the uh, morning offering prayer, right? But let's go through it, okay? Why don't we recite it together for the benefit of everybody uh, uh, to review? What, what it contains, okay? So what do we do? We say in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen, right? Okay, in chorus, let's say. Amen. Oh my Jesus, through the Immaculate Heart of Mary. See? Pause. Right from there, right from there, we're offering our day to Jesus. We call on Jesus, right? Jesus, but through the Immaculate Heart of Mary, we are immediately asking Our Lady, a hey, Mother, be part of this, please. Okay? Participate in this offering. We'd like to call on your intercession right away, right from the get-go, right from the be uh, beginning, to already involve Our Lady and ask her to help us offer the day. Right? So, okay. Again, my Jesus, through the Immaculate Heart of Mary, offer thee all my thoughts, words, actions, joys, and suffering of this day. Wow, what, what can be more complete than that, right? I offer you all my thoughts. Whatever it is I think about today is going to be offered to you. My thoughts, my words, my deeds, right? My joys, whatever makes me happy. My suffering, whatever's going to make me suffer or sad or 
or whatever it is you send me uh, trials this day that you might send me I welcome all of that and I'm going to offer all of that to you that's what we're telling Jesus right I offer thee all my thoughts words actions joys and suffering of this day then how do we continue in union with the holy sacrifice of the mass throughout the world in union with the holy sacrifice of the mass throughout the world meaning we are we are connecting all of our joys sufferings thoughts words deeds we are connecting it to all the intentions of all the masses that are being offered all throughout the world that we that we would like to to draw down for ourselves all the graces and all the merits of Jesus Christ that is that is uh, uh, going to go uh, come down on every altar of all the masses that will be celebrated during that day and we are also uniting our own thoughts words actions joys and suffering to all of those masses because a mass is the most perfect prayer is the most perfect offering to God so if only we can do that, if only we can be in all the masses of the world, that is the intention that we are trying to project here. We would like to unite ourselves eh, to all of those masses that are being said all over the world. And, well, in our own family, we have that practice of actually going to Mass. And we, we strive to go to Mass every day. So we're actually uniting all of those Thoughts, words, deeds, and actions that we were trying to offer, we're actually uniting it in the very Mass that we attend every day. <coughs> okay, let's continue. What's next? The intentions of our friends. Okay, in union with the intentions of our friends, the Pope, the bishops, our priests, right? No. Yeah, okay, so, huh? Yeah, that's included. Everything is there. See? So we are also uniting it. We're also uniting our intentions to the intentions of everybody else. See? Why? Why are we connecting everybody in this morning offering? Because of the communion of the saints. See? Because of that, that doctrine of the communion of the saints. That we are all connected in Jesus Christ. See? We are all one family in the church. And so our prayers, our prayers and, and everything we, we offer, okay, through the morning offering, everything can merit grace. Everything can draw down graces from our Lord. There is no thought, word, action, joy or suffering that could be uh, uh, alienated from uh, the, the, the merits of Jesus Christ. Okay? Everything can be connected to that. And therefore, every action we do, everything we think about, everything we suffer and offer to God, all of our joys and, and happiness of the day, if they are connected with Jesus Christ, then they become meritorious. Okay? They become meritorious. In other words, they gain us grace. And then we can connect those things and offer them for the Pope, for the Bishop, uh, for the Church, for our relatives, for our friends. Okay? We can include everybody in the merits that we would gain for that day. See? So that's the beauty of that. That's the beauty of the communion of the saints. That we are all connected. Nobody is isolated. We're all connected in Jesus Christ. Okay, after that, what's next? The particular. Okay, particular. Well, you can, you can ask, uh, you can offer something very specific to our Lord in the morning, or you can petition our Lord for some specific grace for that morning. Eh? And then, and then we, we conclude it by again asking Our Lady, right? My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, then my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. Eh? So now we, 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 ha we ask the help of everybody, all of our friends in heaven, beginning from Our Lady, then St. Joseph, then our guardian angel, and all the angels in heaven and all the saints, intercede for me, that I might really be able to offer up this day to our Lord and do a good job, not only with work, 
not only with prayer, but also with all the virtues that we want to live that day and offering up all of our activities from the most interior, the most secret, so to speak, because they are only ours, thoughts, feelings, to the most public uh, activities that we have to undertake with others and for others. All of these things can be offered to our Lord right from the get-go, right from when the, the day starts. And that is the Catholic practice we call the morning offering prayer. Okay, well, that's it. That's uh, number one Catholic practice um, that uh, we're going to review. And we're going to do the same for many other um, uh, practices and pious um, practices that we as Catholics uh, know and live every day. Okay? Bye-bye, everybody. I hope you have a good start of the week. Bye. And have a good day. We're off to Mass this morning. And uh, we'll remember all your intentions at Mass. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Say bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye. bye.